<laughs> well, my name is Peter Boy, as you may see, and just about myself and my relation to Fedora Server. I'm, I'm a, a scientist at the University of Bremen and graduated in sociology, far away from server. But as minor, I had applied mathematics, which was an academic home for computer science in those times. Well, and once a time, we managed with our institute to apply for a so-called excellence center. It's a special funding uh, in Germany. The effect was you got a lot of money. <laughs> and we got a lot of independence from our central university IT, but the obligation to do it of our own. And because I had that dual qualification, our colleagues think, okay, it's a job for you. As a side job, of course, we need everyone in research. Fortunately, I got some compensation in teaching. But I had a lot of money <laughs> and a, a, a nice side job. It was, well, we started with, with it AIX, it's the IBM version, uh, but soon the Intel boxes got more powerful and we started with Linux and I had to check which Linux. Uh, which Linux distribution, oh, okay. <laughs> well, somehow Red Hat looked for me with all these advantages I know, or well, I knew from IBM, it's a good interface, a good support, everything like that, so I decided for Red Hat. Unfortunately, short after we did that, Ref Red Hat dropped the academic license program, so we had, uh, despite a lot of money, but not so much. <laughs> Fortunately, we got scientific Linux, and we used that, in, or used a combination of scientific Linux and Fedora server, the classical case of usage, um, scientific Linux for the stable version, and Linux uh, and Fedora to get the latest software. But, uh, some time ago, uh, <laughs> scientific Linux died as well, and um, I had the, op uh, the option in CentOS or Fedora, and I decided for Fedora and put everything to Fedora Server Edition, it was in that time. So I had a, a small bunch of 20, about 20 servers, boxes in Fedora Server Edition and some um, virtual machines on top. Well, it's my special experience. You had no any problem with Fedora. Everything works fine, just one case. Uh, we upgraded the release and a colleague of mine saw a strange message, something, something is wrong. But he was saying, okay, it worked forever. <laughs> Don't worry, be happy. But afterwards, we were not happy. <laughs> it's, it's something to do. So I think we at Fedora Server should build in some quirks. So uh, admins uh, keep watching and <laughs> not to be sure everything works fine. Well, that's my personal experience with Fedora. And um, I started then uh, end of 2020 when Matthew started to reboot the server working group. And I had the strange idea to spend our internal Fedora documentation to Fedora instead to build up our own website. And started with documentation. Uh, well, and somehow I ended up as a coordinator for all the business we have. No, I do, okay. So what is, is it not doing? Oh, sorry, I have the, the wrong, the wrong <laughs> glasses. I can't. Oh. Well, probably first, the power, some um, remarks about the current state of Fedora Server Edition, and some information what's going on, and at the end, what we are planning to do for the next time. Um, well, the first thing is a working group. We had a reboot in 2020. And um, currently we have officially 70 members according to the working group relations for FESCO. We have two weekly meetings. 
and we have it constantly about the last seven, the last two years. So I think the reboot if, is, uh, went, went, went fine. Well, we have nine members who in the soon two and a half years have regularly, regularly contributed and discussed, specifically contributed some work. And um, two members who some, uh, sometimes dis uh, discussing, well, and six members who constantly do nothing over the last one and a half years. And um, but it's probably not, no problem, but uh, anyhow, we have to, s to see how to handle uh, these cases, I think. And we have the big advantage that we are a mixture of old hands, so to speak. <laughs> Uh, members who uh, were part of the working group from the, at the beginning, and a lot of newbies, so as me, who try to catch up and to carry it forward. At the end, I think the reboot was a success, and we have now a quite active server um, working group. Well, the other thing is the addition. We updated our technical, our technical specifications, which were shifting from the previous based server role, as a UDEF based server role, to Ansible uh, support or specifically supported services. There are services which should be um, well release relevant. So, in currently, they are not, but they have, maybe they have to introduce some of them as blocking or some kind of blocking um, services. Um, well, we discussed our goals. We discussed the issue if you are, our goals are too old now, uh, overcome by some weakening, but we stayed with them. So it's not, uh, we are still um, stick with the Technology, with the technology, technology which supports various options, not just one, which does not just want options which is specific, specifically hyphen, hyped in the discussion. And we well, stick with a server which is easily to, can, easily be, can easily be adapted to different needs, different, um, uh, well, different needs, different structures, different contexts. So we will stay to be a multi-purpose server and that means we will stay at the near future with package-based distributions, installations, I think. Um, nevertheless, of course, we are looking for what's, what the development is, and we are looking for new, new, uh, new or nearly new use cases, so we may adapt server or some distribution medias to new, UK, new use cases, something. Oh, I have to lock it. Um, And I think it's not so bad with our goals. If you look at the development past over the last year, we have a constantly grow of update. As it is, the, the graph is the number of DNF updates per month. It may be a better uh, figure to indicate the usage of server as a near download uh, number. So we have been a constant growth, I think we are on the right path, so to speak. Um, we have, we have, we, yes, we have a, a growing demand. And if you look at the um, numbers which Matthew presented yesterday, was it? Yes. With the Fedora server, we have still a good amount of uh, users um, in relation to other editions and relation to other parts of the Fedora distribution. So I think I mean, at the moment, or for the time being, we can do what we are doing. Um, well, what's going on? A constant task is docs improvement. And if you look at the commit numbers over the last, uh, it's the last year, yes. Um, 
Well, compared to other editions, we are not that bad. <laughs> we have, uh, what is it? We have the second most, no, the third most, okay. Um, commitments and actual updates of our documentation. And I think we are a good way to improve that further. But of course, if someone of you would like to write some documentation, <laughs> everyone is welcome. Um, and we have a lot of things to do. We are not, uh, we have not, no lack of t tasks to do. <laughs> we have a long list here, as you see. But the main task for the next future is to, to bring up or to get up our Ansible support project because it's the main, the main issue of our product. Um, uh, the product demand, uh, yes, what is it? Product requirement document, yes. And it is a main section in our technical specification, but unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't get around it in the, in the last year. And we have to review our installation media. I think the last, the last time the installation media were reviewed is probably eight years or so ago. There, was, there were some minor changes. Um, well, about, but after eight years, maybe it's a good idea to, uh, to, to review the issue. Um, there is no, actually no problem. I think nobody is com complaining about it. But nevertheless, there are some strange issues on it, um, which may be uh, deleted. And there are some new ideas which you can or should include into it. I know. Um, server admins are very strange people, including me. <laughs> when someone comes near to a server, it is, don't touch, <laughs> don't do anything as long as it works. Um, and that is the way we didn't touch <laughs> the installation really until now. Um, well, but sometimes you have to touch. But we are dependent on our old hands to make this work, I would say, because I'm, uh, I try hard. I, I, I had a lot of hard times to produce our new uh, virtual machine images, and that beast called, what is it, image factory. It was not so easy to get that up and running. And I think with the uh, installation media, it's much more complicated. Well, then we have some upcoming projects. The first is in Fedora Server in a virtualized environment. Until now, we were too much focused on Fedora on hard hardware and probably virtual machines on our own hard, so Fedora based hardware. But nowadays, there are, or not nowadays, since some years, there are a lot of providers which offer not only cloud and, and cloud system, but also, offer, also offers virtual private servers or dedicated private servers, how you will name it. And um, at the moment, we don't have anything to offer for those. But I got a lot of questions about how to install Fedora server on one of these th um, offerings. So the idea is to produce adjusted installed images depending on the provider's uh, own system and to create documentation how to do it. Anyway, we, I made an initial, initial post on the mailing list and I got a lot of response and questions and um, a, a demand to make it as fast as possible. <laughs> so I think there is a, a field where we can gain new, new users, I hope so. Um, and the other thing is server on ARM um, single board computers. It's a um, well discussed item at the, for in the last years. Well, we had a lot of inhibitions. What should we do with such a do it yourself <laughs> thing in a, in a Fedora server for production, meant for production? But we st started to, uh, to discuss the item and, and to find options, to find ways how to use it in a meaningful way. So we started to discuss criteria, how to select 
one of the uh, single board computers. And there is this simple, simple things as a solid case, <laughs> so nothing uh, goes cool. Oh, it's me? No. Fire extinguished. <laughs> well, we, did, we tried to determine some selection criteria, and we tried to determine some useful applications. That, and we find maybe applications which need a 24/7 uh, operation, and are less power consumptive. So it's a, may, maybe a a way to offer these services in an economical, useful way. Like backup software, backup server, or server monitor, or cluster monitor software, or cockpit gateway, such things like that, which are, don't need much computer power, but need to have an uh, uninterrupted operation. So it may be a useful, maybe, you have maybe a useful, um, a useful use case for these kind of combination, our valuable Fedora server with such a do-it-yourself <laughs> device. Um, in the long term, we are um, looking to be a, to, to set up an economical and energy efficient home server, which offers a lot of services and compensating, or can use to, be, to compensate uh, software limitations of commercial NAS or network attached storage with a web interface, which limits you a lot of, uh, a lot of when it li limits you not to be, use, you know, be able to use a lot of fake capabilities, which the operating system of the network attached storage provides, but you can't access it because of the web interface, and you can't override it because the web interface overrides you, overrides <laughs> as soon as it uh, starts the box again. So that's so in short, um, the plannings we are uh, discussed or have discussed in our server double server working group. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Yes, uh, we have, uh, okay, we have a moderator. Good. <laughs> yeah, ju just one question. I. I, I uh, used to run Fedora server on my uh, email machine and uh, where I have all, all my stuff. And I, I had the problem that every six months I had to, to well, not every, but uh, uh, there's, a, there's a point in which uh, the, um, the distribution goes and end of life. And it, it was a little, it was hard to being reinstalling in, in a remote environment and, and eventually uh, went, went uh, and installed CentOS. But my, my, my question is, it, it, do you guys have like a path of upgrading uh, and avoiding this, the, these types of, of problems? Uh, I'm, just as, as an example, when you upgrade OpenLDAP, uh, it, the thing will not start if, until you do the checks of the database and all that stuff. So, uh, do you have a path for upgrade? Yeah, it's, it's a standard. Usually, it's a standard upgrade path with using the DNF system upgrade option. And if you wait two or three weeks, I think we have a documentation how to set up an email server on Fedora server. So um, it may help you <laughs> to set it up in a way it, it doesn't interfere with up, update operations. Um, I can speak to that one a bit too, Peter. Um, I'm Adam Williamson, the Fedora QA team lead. I used to do the same thing, uh, running a mail server, and I ran into a lot of the same issues probably you ran into. So. There tend to be just things when you upgrade a mail server where you know a server thing has bumped to a new version and you need to change the config file so it won't run properly as something is getting denied by SE Linux, that always happened. Um, 
There is a potential path there, which is that, so for uh, free IPA and um, Postgres, we actually have test, um, those are blocking for server. So we have release blocking tests for it and we actually have automation that tests that you can deploy a free IPA server and upgrade it to the next version and it will keep working as one. So in theory, if we make the new mail goal release blocking, if we decided that was an important enough requirement, we could then also do the same for that, right? I only have the resources to devote to doing this work for things that are release blocking. I can't really do it for all the roles that aren't release blocking, but that would probably be the best way to improve that experience, because yeah, I do know all the things you're talking about, and it is painful, yeah. Thanks. Uh, you mentioned you did uh, Ansible uh, adjustments. What did you have to do on the OS side for Ansible? I mean, what did it, did it involve? Uh, I'm just a coordinator. <laughs> well, we, we started with a, with a model project, so to speak, to install Wildfly in a way uh, that we can do it without an RPM, using Ansible to, to, to install it to install the system D infrastructure, and, okay, and to maintain it. And, um, well, the, the guy who, who was working on that project, well, it was a problem, uh, he could, he had to, um, to, to delay it for some time, but he has uh, two issues, obviously, to, um, to get Wildfly up and running with, uh, with certificates. There's a current Wildfly option, uh, version, uh, well, which causes some troubles, and he has problems to select from the many Ansible uh, scripts to support Wildfly to support the one he he well he, he needs. So we are we are if you could give, give us some advice, some support, it would be very helpful, I think. But I'm not the person who does the work <laughs> at the moment. That's the, the case we have. And um, if you look at the Fedora issue, um, uh, no, uh, Git in Pagu or Pagu, however it is, <laughs> it is pronounced. Um, I think it's up to the <laughs> we have, side. We have an issue for that. It is 64, I think, or 60. Um, oh, I, I had it here. It is. Um, Yes. So a long time ago we had this thing called server roles, and this was built kind of bespoke to let you deploy like a free IPA server or a database server, and it was supposed to take all the pain out of it for you. You just run one command and you have a working database server. And this is about rebuilding that using Ansible plays instead of this bespoke thing which we kind of have to get out of Yes, it's issue number 60, also just in case. <laughs> I'll admit to not having kept up with the, the discussions around the Fedora Server Working Group, but can you help me understand the difference between the work that's being done by the Fedora IoT folks and the single board ARM computer work that the server group wishes to do. Well, uh, I, I, could you a bit louder? I couldn't understand. Oh, sorry. sorry. I heard myself <laughs> through the speakers. <laughs> um, can you help me understand the difference between the, the server working group's single board ARM computer thoughts and the work done by something like Fedora IoT? Well, we are uh, cooperating with the ARM uh, SIG, of course, and um, uh, maybe our use case is different from IOT, I IOT, sorry. Um, we want to assist or replace a network access, um, uh, yeah, network attached storage world, uh, whereas IOT um, aims to a different goal. I can't describe it exactly, I must say. The only thing I decided for me, it's different. <laughs> and um, the same is true with the with our, um, no, with our virtual environment project, we are not aiming at the cloud, not aiming at cloud services, but aiming at virtual 
virtual servers which are run independently from any uh, administration service on, well, on, a, on, on your hardware instead of mine. So I think it's different. It's a different use case. Okay, and if someone has some time to spend, please at <laughs> join our working group. We are uh, friendly, been busy, and uh, good to our people. So, and we need we need soft we need <laughs> we need hands. If you look at our open project, <laughs> thanks.